Hey guys, it's Steven here and welcome to my full review of the Duchi Valencia 2 Y100 Pro. Now, a very long name for a small smartphone as you can see, but the phone itself, it's really not too bad for the price. Now, it's a low budget phone, that means it retails for something like 100 euro, 110 dollars. And honestly, I have to say, um, first of all, I wasn't really impressed because the advertising was a bit misleading. They said it's a metal unibody phone. Most people think a metal unibody phone, yeah, that's a full metal phone. But no, um, this time not. It comes with a plastic back cover, but this has some reasons like to improve the antenna signal. All in all, phone is not too bad and don't forget to check out chinadevices.com for sample pictures and the written review and there's also an unboxing on my channel so if you want to see the unboxing, all the accessories and some close-ups of the device, make sure you check them out too. And now guys, let's get directly started and let's do the review. Now for that small amount of money you get some big specs so let's check them out. Here you can see it comes with a 2.5D arc screen. In my opinion kinda useless because the effect gets destroyed by the black frame around it. It's not looking that good like on the EQ E04. It comes with a 5.0 HD screen and it should be IPS and OGS and it's looking really good so the colors and everything not too bad. The chipset it's the MTK6735. It's a quad core CPU running with a maximum clock of 1 GHz. Now some data sheets they say 1.3, 1.5 but nope. The CPU is running at 1.0, so 988 MHz. It comes with Android 5.1 straight out of the box, and the OTAs, they are working. I already installed two OTAs. Then it comes with 2GB of RAM plus 16GB of ROM, which is pretty good for the price. WCDMA, so triple band. Then it comes with quad band GSM and some LTE frequencies, which you cannot see here on the package, but it definitely supports 4G LTE. Now the rear camera, so the main camera, it's a Sony 13 megapixel camera, not really sure about that, maybe interpolated and I'm not sure which sensor they're going to use or which sensors in there. Now um, we'll check that out when we take the phone apart, probably next week, or maybe we can find it in the firmware. Okay, and the front facing camera, it says Omnivision 8 megapixels, but well, I guess it's maximum 5 because the front facing camera doesn't look so good. Okay, so that are basically the specs, not too bad for the price. And now guys, let's just go and let's have a look at the smartphone. So guys, there we go, here's the Duchi, and it's a 5 inch phone, so it's really handy, the frame is not too big, so that's actually the perfect size for me. The back cover, it's made out of plastic, so feels a little bit cheap, but this phone is really heavy. It weighs 151 grams, and this gives it a really premium feeling. So you have something very nice built in your hands. And yeah, um, the buttons, they are also made out of metal, and the overall design, well, for a low budget phone, I really like the design. 2.5D arc screen, nice materials, and 150 grams, which is really heavy, it feels heavier than my Galaxy S6, um, it gives it a really premium look and feeling. Now here are some close-ups from the device. At the top we have here the front-facing camera, it says 8 megapixel omnivision sensor, but I'm not sure if that is true. In the middle we have the speaker, and right from that we have light and proximity sensor. You can see here the 2.5D arc screen, so it's a little bit curved, but there's also such a plastic frame around it, and this somehow destroys the effect. So it's not looking that good like on the EQ, but it's still looking really sexy. Then let's have a look at the display. 720p but on 5 inches this is still a high pixel density and it's definitely looking good. I also like the viewing angles and everything so you have no problem to read this display when you're outside. Then here at the bottom we have capacitive touch buttons like here the menu button, home button and back button but those buttons they don't have any backlight. That's the bad thing so you see they are just silver, they are reflecting the light a little bit but there's absolutely no backlight on the buttons. The plastic back cover also covers the frame so it gives it really a unibody look and also it looks a little bit like metal at least at the first look. And Duchi advertised this phone as a metal unibody phone. Now, most people understand something different, like um, the body of the HTC One, but well, um, this is still a good build quality, um, even though I was a bit disappointed that it just comes with a plastic back cover which looks like metal. Now, at the back of the Duchi, we can see the rear camera should have 13 megapixels and should have a Sony sensor. Then here you can see the LED flash, it's a single one. Then here you can see it looks a little bit like brushed aluminum, so actually the plastic back cover, so it's laminated polycarbonate or something like that isn't um, the worst quality. Then here at the bottom you can see the Duchi logo and the speaker grid and under that you'll find a single speaker. 
The buttons feel good to press, they are placed on the right side of the frame and they are also inside of the back cover. So basically when you remove the back cover you also remove the buttons. And they are made out of metal so we have here a metal power button, feels pretty good to press, it's not wobby and here we have a metal volume rocker so volume down and volume up. The top of this device features a micro USB port to charge it or to connect it to the computer, a 3.5mm headphone jack to connect headphones or a headset and you see that the camera is coming a little bit out of the device. Now let's have a look at the opposite side, so the bottom side, and here at the bottom we just have the bottom microphone for doing calls or whatever. And that's the one and only microphone on the Duji Y100 Pro. Removing the back cover is simple as pie, so let's do it. And you can easily remove it with your fingernails, so there we go. And the back cover is very stable, so it's really not just simple plastic. Well, it can be a little bit tricky to get it off, <laughs> but there we go. And here's the back cover, and as you can see here it says um, polycarbonate plus ABS and something else. And we have here some pattern which gives it, or structure, which gives it some extra stability. So the back cover here is really, oh, no, I just cracked it, sorry guys. Um, is really very stable, but not too stable, so don't try this and oh no the power button is now broken you see the buttons they are actually in here so you can't really take them out and if you have a look now at the phone then you will see that there's just a foil so the flex cable for the buttons and now guys let's go and let's have a closer look at the slots so guys this is how the Duji looks without the back cover and the battery is removable so let's get it out of the phone and there we go we'll just have a look at the battery in a second here you can see the sticker with model number, IMEIs and everything. And you see a lot of screws all along the frame. And this phone is very stable, it's almost impossible to bend. And I guess we have here a full metal frame, at least here, here and here. Not sure about the top, but we're going to check that out next week. And this makes the phone pretty heavy. So that's pretty good because it's a very stable and small smartphone. Okay, at the bottom we have the speaker. Then here we have the antennas. One, two, three antennas. And yeah, um, metal frame and antennas, you have to be careful when it's a full metal unibody phone, then usually um, you need to design the antennas very good, otherwise you will get a crappy signal. But with the back cover made out of plastic, that's no problem at all, because this is not shielding the antennas. Okay, then let's have a look at the slots. Micro SD card slot, I have in here my 64GB SanDisk micro SD, works like a charm. Here SIM card slot 1, micro SIM card slot, and here we have a big SIM card slot 2. Not sure about the frequencies right now, but we'll check that out a little bit later, and here you can see the frequencies once again. But LT is missing, but it should be in there, so we'll check it out soon. Okay, um, here the LED flash and the rear camera, as you have seen before, and this is how the phone looks from the inside. So guys, here's the battery. Duji battery, and it says here 3.8 volts lithium-ion battery, and it's really thin. So um, the capacity should be 2200 mAh. Hours. And from my experience I know it's way too lightweight and it's way too thin. Reminds me a lot of the Yumi Hammer battery and yes my feeling was actually right so I removed the tape here and here we have the factory label on the battery and what does it say here can you read it guys? 1800 now camera please focus now I think now you can see it, 1800 milliamp hours. So actually Duchi cheated and they said it's a 2200, but yeah, um, customers are not stupid, so why do you guys do that? I mean, um, if you just check out the battery and it's so thin and so lightweight, everybody knows that 2200 can't be real. So Duchi, please stop lying just like Yumi, otherwise this will get you a really bad reputation. Now guys, let's go, let's have a quick look at the charger, and it doesn't support quick charging, it's a normal 5 watt charger, you can check it also out in my unboxing, and it says here 5 volts output, 1 amp, that equals 5 watts. Okay, the charger doesn't get really hot, so just a little bit warm, and the phone is currently charging with a rate of 0.76 amps. And I did a capacity test, it was more than 1800 milliamp hours, but well, um, you lose something in the charging circuit and everything, so it's around 1800. I did a discharge test with my, with my circuit board, and it was a bit less, so um, it's around 1800, and that's really not much for the phone. Charger is okay, but the maximum current is 0.76 amps, and it takes more than two hours to charge the phone, so actually two and a half to three hours, that should be realistic. So guys, there we go, we're now here in Android 5.1 on the Duchi. 
And the system UI is really smooth. I didn't expect that because, yeah, the CPU is only clocked at 1 gigahertz, but 2 gigabytes of RAM also helps a little bit. So um, you see, really smooth, and that's pretty good. Now, it's a little bit customized, so we have here a black theme, some new icons, a new wallpaper, but that's basically it, and it's still Android 5.1. So let's quickly go here to the settings, let's check everything out. And here at the bottom we have about the phone, here we can confirm this is Android version 5.1, here we have the Lollipop e stack, and there we go. Then let's go back here, here we have all the versions, and at the top we have wireless update. Now I did an OTA six days ago, so here you can see the date, and yeah, it's actually working okay. And there is no need for an update, although there is no update. Only the camera could be a little bit improved by Nota, but yeah, that would be everything. Then let's go up here to Wi-Fi, and there we go. I'm connected to my home network, router is in the next room. I'm getting 65 Mbit's link speed, it supports 2.4 GHz. And in the second floor, in my sleeping room, I get a really low signal, but also on some brand phones like my S6, I don't get a better signal. So Wi-Fi is really okay on the smartphone, and the antennas and the overall quality is really not too bad. Okay, so let's go to Bluetooth. Um, Bluetooth is working. I tried Bluetooth with my Yumi Voix Blue speakers, but unfortunately they are empty right now. Let's have a look at Hotnot, and Hotnot is something similar to NFC, it's from MediaTek, so it's their own feature. And it allows data exchange when screen touches another device only between Hotnot devices, and um, for me that feature is useless. So I love NFC, I have some NFC tags. Really use that feature, but Hotnot, it's, it's bullshit, okay? Just my opinion on it. So you need a lot of friends who have Hotnot, or you have to have hot, yeah, many MTK devices in your family which support Hotnot. So let's have a look at display. Here you can see mirror vision, that's included, that's pretty good, so you can tweak a display if you need to do that. Then let's go back here. We have sound notification, we have storage, and you see it perfectly well detects my 64 gigabyte SD card, total space 60 gigs, and here at the bottom we have the one and only partition of the phone. And that's the main partition, so you can see we have about 10 gigabytes of usable space without the SD card, so that's pretty good. And I haven't really stored something on the internal, so you get 10 to 11 gigabytes of usable space. Okay, um, that was storage, and let's have a look at the battery stats. Battery dies really fast, guys, so you can almost watch it draining. Now, um, if you are actually not a heavy Android user, one day is possible, but at the end of the day you have to recharge. And yeah, just like most of the smartphones, it's definitely maximum a day. For me, it was actually not enough, so I just, um, um, yeah, it could last three to four hours more than it would be perfect for me, but it was not really enough for me. But it really depends on your usage. It's really hard to tell people if the battery is good. It really depends on how often you use your smartphone. If you're a nerd or if you don't have any friends and you're all the time on Facebook or YouTube, you will drain it in a couple of hours. Or if you just use it like um, a normal person, you'll probably get through the day. It's hard to tell, but I don't like the fact that they faked the battery capacity and that it's only 1,800 milliamp hours. That's not good. Okay, that's regarding the battery. Then let's check out apps running in the background. And there we go. So here we can see it. And the memory consumption of the ROM, it's um, around 200 megabytes plus 400, so it's around 600 megabytes, and we still have about 1.3 gigabytes of free RAM for applications or whatever. And the RAM is not limiting, so what is limiting is the chipset, because it's only clocked at 1 gigahertz, and really this is too slow. Now 3D games will be very laggy, as I will show you later, and the system UI is kind of smooth, but maybe it will lag in the future, I don't know. But so far it's really okay. Okay, that's regarding apps. We have different users, we have GPS, we have smart gestures, we have smart wake up. If you use that, so double tap to wake up. That's actually the only thing which I'm using. I'm not using the off-screen gestures you can see right over there. Security accounts, blah blah blah, so the usual stuff. And there is nothing more interesting here. Develop options at the bottom, and that's basically it, guys. So we now had a look at the settings, and now let's check out the rest of the phone. Now guys, let's have a quick look at all the basic functions, like the dial application, which you can see right over here. 
and let's try to call a number. By the way, call quality is really okay. I did a lot of calls and yeah, um, the speaker is okay, so the earpiece and also the microphone. So people said, yeah, you just sound like you would call from an iPhone, so no difference, really good. Okay, then let's call 147, a very popular number. Let's try to act. Whoa, that is loud, holy crap. Can you hear that? Oh my god. So the speaker is really, really loud. Quality could be a bit better, but it's okay. You see the sensors, they are shutting off the display. That's pretty good. And well, um, nothing to say about the call quality and also the dial APK. Everything working. Then here's the messaging application. We can just try to compose a message like, um, hey, what's up? Uh, Bitches. And it's a five point capacitive touchscreen. Five inches, it's a little bit too small for me to type actually, but um, the good thing is that this touchscreen really has five multi touch points, and this is way better than the two point screen which you get on some cheap phones. So be a bit careful. Okay, um, here we have the browser. I was just checking out some cats. I, I like cats, I like them a lot. And yeah, let's go back here. So you see it's working. I'm connected to Wi Fi. Absolutely no problems here in the browser. Um, I, I also watched some movies on YouTube, so that's also no problem. But well, the battery lifetime could definitely be better. So if you're watching movies, then make sure you have a power bank. Here we have the Android status bar, like notifications, quick toggles, like here the brightness slider, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. Um, here we have a hotspot button, that's pretty good, so you can easily make a hotspot. That's actually for the Duji Xanda app, I think. Um, here we have data connection, so you can switch it on, on or off. Then here we have the torch, we'll check that out later, and a hot not button. Okay, now let's go to the menu and let's check out all the important applications. And here's some crap I have installed, browser, calendar, calculator and yeah the first thing we have here it's the camera so let's go quickly outside and let's do a camera test so we're now here outside in my garden and here's a quick camera test in the camera application now the tap out to focus it's really fast and accurate so that's something I like about that phone that's really good just check this out also the lighting adjustment works as you can see and there we go. If we focus in the middle, also the outer borders, they look quite sharp. I'll just capture some photos and upload them to chinadevices.com, so make sure you check it out, you will find all the samples there. On the left side we have several effects like motion track mode, panorama mode, but we'll just go back here to normal mode. Okay, um, here we have gestures, we have the LED flash, we can switch here to the front facing camera, so let's check this out. Front facing camera looks actually kind of bad, so um, definitely not 8 megapixel, and I think it's a cheap 5 megapixel sensor, something like that. Also the lens here, not the best one. Okay, so let's switch here to the settings, and in here we have the usual settings. Here we have the picture size, you can see the maximum picture size is 6 megapixels in 6 into 9, and in 4 to 3 you will probably get 8. Okay, but I guess the sensor has less. Then here you can see um, video mode, and here we have video quality, let's set it to high for the test, and let's go back to the rear camera. Now well, let's try to capture some more photos, shutter is really fast, um, not a huge delay. Then we can switch here to video mode, that is also working, we'll for sure do a test video. And let's go here to the settings and let's check out the picture size. So here the normal stuff, then here we have the maximum picture size is 6 megapixels, ok, ok that's in full screen. And in 4 to 3 we get up to 13. So I guess that's interpolated and the sensor also has less and I'm really not sure if that is a Sony sensor. I mean pictures they are not looking bad but yeah well Sony I don't know and it also depends which Sony sensor which model blah blah blah. Then here we have um, the video settings let's now set it to fine and let's do some test videos. Okay guys then let's go and let's check it out. So guys we just had a look at the camera application here in the engineering mode device info you can see that the camera too is an omnivision sensor and the rear camera it's the IMX 219 so well it's definitely a Sony sensor but the quality of it well it's not too good now you can check out the sample pictures on chinadevices.com video quality um, well it's also kind of blurry but I would say it's okay for a hundred dollar phone 
Alright, so that was the camera application. Then let's have a quick look at the rest here. So we have here the usual stuff, browser. Then it comes with DG Xander. So that's actually um, Xander only. It's called here Duchi Xander. But you can have Xander on every Android phone. It's basically an application which allows you to share data. Very easy. You just um, press the button. It opens up in Wi-Fi hotspot and then you can exchange data between um, smartphones, tablets, your computer, whatever. Cool application, but that's nothing special. I'm not sure why they branded with the Duji logo because you can actually install that on every phone. Okay, um, then let's have a look at the rest here. So it comes with all the Google apps pre-installed, FM radio, but you have to use the headset. Um, Go keyboard was pre-installed, a lot of crap was pre-installed, music player will do a music test just in a second. It comes with the latest version of the Google Play Store, as you can see here. So you can download everything, you just have to update the Google um, apps once, and then you're actually ready to go, and that's really easy, it's just one click. And well, um, yeah, that's basically everything. The rest are basically apps which I have installed on the smartphone. So here's the last page, voice search and YouTube. So what we'll do now is we'll just go outside and do a quick GPS test, an LED flash test, and yeah, then some benchmarks and after this you will hear my conclusion about the Duji Y100 Pro. Here's just a quick movie and speaker test, and so far the movie playback is smooth, and the speaker it's very loud even though the quality could be better, but just listen for yourself guys. And do you hear that? It's really loud. I think only my S6 is a little bit louder, but yeah, quality could be better. Well, it's a um, low budget phone, so for that it's really okay. I had phones like the Elephone S2, Yuki Tell U8, and the speaker was terrible. So here it's a bit better, but yeah, still not the best. Now guys, here's a quick LED flash test, and well, the LED flash is a big joke, I mean, just look into that, it's not really strong, so for photos at night, forget it. I mean, it's okay um, to use it as a flashlight, for instance, if you lose something and it's dark, then it's okay. But if you want to take pictures in a complete dark room, this is way too low. Alright guys, so now let's talk about the benchmarks. I don't want to do it with music anymore, I just want to tell you something. In Geekbench we get 472 single core and 1256 multi core. Now that's not really much, but also the chip said it's, yeah, clocked very slow. Okay, um, then let's have a look at the other things. Operating system Android 5.1, you have 1.9 gigabytes of RAM, so around 2 gigs, that's okay. Let's have a look at the Antutu benchmark result, we get here around 20k. That's completely normal with the 1 gigahertz um, chipset, unfortunately the performance is quite low. Then we can have a look here at the info. We can see here that the um, Android version is 5.1 but 32 bits. I'm not sure why, but all those MTK6735, they come with 32 bit system, probably because MediaTek is supplying the Android versions, and I'm not really sure if the chipset actually supports it. Um, yeah, MediaTek says yes, but why do all Android versions with that chipset here run on 32 bits? I have no clue and I haven't seen any 1.3 or 1.5 GHz version, so all I had, they were just running at a maximum clock of 988, which kind of sucks. Now display, you can see it's um, 720p, then 320 dots per inch. Here once again the camera, but doesn't say anything about the sensor. Then here at the bottom you can see um, which sensors the phone has, and it has a G sensor, light sensor proximity, and that's it, nothing more. But it's a low budget phone, so they usually don't come with a lot of sensors. Okay, I did a quick speed test, you can check out the result here. I've got 11 Mbits down, 3 up. On the Meizu I had constantly 25, 26 on 3G, I don't have LT. And it was way better, same for the ping, but it's okay. I did multiple tests and it was always um, not so good like the Meizu for instance, which I think is still the best phone I've reviewed for a long time. It's a full 5 point multi-touch capacitive touchscreen, that's pretty good, so everything working here. We can have a quick look at the sensor box, and here you can see it only comes with the basic sensors, no gyroscope, no magnetic sensor, blah blah blah, it comes with a sound sensor, but that's actually nothing special. Okay, now let's have a quick look at CPU set, and there we go. So here we have the chipset, it's running with a maximum clock of 988, you see here, quite efficient, so it's only using one or two cores when in idle. Then let's have a look at the system, so here you can see it. 
4.6 inches yeah well that's wrong again it's actually 5 inches and that's for sure because I measured it root access no blah 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 so the usual stuff and battery and here um, thermal stats phone really doesn't get hot so the metal body is also I think better for heat dissipation and I'm using it now for a very long time did benchmarks gaming maximum temperature around 45 and we have here 25 degrees room temperature sensors as you can see Working, good thing, but only the basic sensors, so nothing fancy here. And uh, well, um, I would say, guys, that's basically it. So we had a look at the benchmarks and CPU set, and now let's do a quick gaming test. Here's a quick look at a 3D gaming test here in Modern Combat, and yeah, the game is really kind of laggy. So if you like to play those 3D games like shooters, like um, how is it called? Dead Island? No, not Dead Island. Dead Trigger. Then, yeah, forget it. You see it's really laggy. I have something like, I don't know, 15 FPS sometimes drops to 10 FPS or, lo or lower. And this is really unplayable. I mean, yeah, you see, I can play it, but it's not a lot of fun because it's lagging so hard. And, um, yeah, 2 gigabytes of RAM, it's definitely enough, but um, why 2 gigabytes of RAM if the chipset is limiting? 1 gigahertz is really too low. Actually, the chipset should run at 1.5, then it would be okay and support full 64 bits, then it would also be okay, but nope. Um, yeah, 3D games, forget it. Even ch um, GTA on low graphics, it's really unplayable. So, um, normal 2D games like Candy Crush or some other hipster shit, it's okay, but forget those 3D games, it's really not a lot of fun. Alright, so here's a quick GPS test in the GPS test application and if you did see my other MTK6735 review, so other phones with that chipset, then you probably know that the GPS reception was really bad on those phones. But here, oh, uh, but here on the um, Y100 Pro, you see the GPS reception is really good. You can see we have only 10 satellites because it doesn't support GLONASS, so just the basics, but we have 10 satellites in view, 10 in use, and the signal you can see here it's very good most of the bars are green bars that means very good signal so si signal level over 30 and the accuracy is pretty high but that's due to Android 5 okay so in the GPS test application the signal so the reception looks very good and actually I'm satisfied with it unfortunately that chipset doesn't support GLONASS so it doesn't find so many satellites just 10 but the signal to them only green bars so that's a good job on the antenna Duchi. Now here's a quick navigation test in Google Navigation because SciJig isn't working for some strange reason. It wants to download everything over Wi-Fi but I'm currently driving to Vienna to a party and I don't have Wi-Fi right now. Okay, so let's use Google Navigation and there we go and the roundabout and let's see what it is doing. So we're not taking the predicted road. It follows the road exactly, that's accurate. We're now out of the roundabout and we're now also out of the roundabout here um, on the phone. And there we go, let's accelerate a little bit. Whoops, uh, holy shit. Wait a bit, I need to do a cut here. So guys, we're now here back on the smartphone. Sorry for the little cut, but I had to search the smartphone under my seat. But so far, I'm really happy with the GPS performance. Now, I had a lot of MTK6735 smartphones and GPS was usually very bad. You could tell you ate unusable. Blue Blue X550, better, but still not really good. Here, um, today, we have very good weather conditions, so probably that's why we have a very good signal. But also, um, when we had very good weather conditions on the UKTEL U8, GPS was really a piece of crap. But here, I have to say, Duchi did a really good job on the antenna design on the smartphone because the chipset is not the best, it doesn't support so many GPS standards and no GLONASS, it only finds 10 satellites, but um, the signal to them is very, very good. And the GPS performance for that chipset is actually the best one I've ever seen on a smartphone with that chipset. So, Good job, Duji. Alright boys and girls, we're now here at the end of this review and here comes my conclusion about the phone. Now, um, the phone not too bad for the price if you keep in mind that it's very cheap, but I just don't like fake advertising, so this really pisses me off. Now, um, the battery, it's actually only 1800, so around 1800. I measured less, but you cannot be so accurate, so we don't have laboratory conditions here in my room. And also the discharge rate wasn't really constant, but um, I would say it's okay, it's around 1800. And yeah, and this gives you maximum a day of battery lifetime. And um, if you're a heavy Android user, you probably should go around with a power bank because yeah, it drains kind of fast. 
Um, the MTK6735, I mean, it doesn't drain so much, so for slight usage, normal usage, you will get a day of battery lifetime, but um, the performance is also kind of bad. 20,000 points in a tutu is not really much, 3D games will be a pain in the ass to play. Um, the reception of the phone, due to the plastic back cover, is really good. Best GPS performance I've seen on an MTK6735 phone. That's fact. Yukitel and Blue Boo was really shit, but here GPS was solid. That's working. Then, yeah, performance, um, kinda low. Android here is not running at 64 bits. Not really sure what MediaTek is doing here, so they are supplying the basic ROM, and it's a 32 bit ROM. All the chipsets I've got right now, they're running at a maximum clock of 1 GHz, which results in that low score, no 64 bit, and this kinda sucks. So MediaTek actually said it's the M version, the P version, well, it has both here and the build prop and everything. Uh, I think there's only one chipset, and this crap is only running at 1 GHz, but I don't know, let's see what the future brings. Um, the phone, very basic, basic sensors, HD display is good, the build quality is very good, it's very stable and heavy, 150 grams for that small phone here. Um, it has a metal body on the inside, so that is for sure a metal body, we'll take it apart next week, but the back cover is made out of plastic, even though it's polycarbonate, multi-layer, laminated, blah 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 shit, it's still a 50 cent back cover. But this improves, um, yeah, the, the antennas, and I have to say GPS was really good, also the 3G reception, really good call quality good and that's what you want to have on a low budget phone because most of the people um, who want to buy that kind of phone they just want a cheap phone to do probably calls some photos which you can do with the IMX 219 Sony sensor it's not too bad but it's also not really something fancy so I would say a bit below average um, sensor could do better, maybe camera model not the best, but um, it's okay for a low budget phone, so um, if you like the design, if you like a small and heavy phone which makes it feel a bit superior quality, then go for it, why not, but just keep in mind the performance kinda sucks. Alright, so sorry for the long review again, I just want to cover all the things, it took me now 4 days to test the phone, so I'm a bit slow right now, but the next phone, I'll probably get it today, is the Ulephone B-Touch 2, should actually be here since 2 weeks, but they sent me the wrong phone, they just sent me the B-Touch 1 again. Okay, so the B-Touch 2, yeah, stay tuned for an unboxing tomorrow, today we'll probably unbox some, yeah, some mini PC or whatever, then stay fresh guys, have a nice day and bye bye, see ya!